Gray man is somebody that wants to just blend in with the natural environment, day-to-day -day activities, while conceal carrying a gun. Typically, this person's gonna carry the mindset of defending innocence and being inconspicuous and incognito at the same time. So as you see here today what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a flannel shirt with a Patagonia hat, some 686 jeans, and some Nike SBs. Nothing that outrightly is going to label me as a guy that's carrying a gun. You don't want to advertise with some big green neon sign that says, this dude has a gun. You know, as though I'm a proud American, typically I don't wear something that's braggadocious with a huge American flag on it or, you know, wearing a Glock shirt or tactical pants with a ton of pockets and stuff like that. Those things are great for the range. But if I'm gonna go out into every day, you're going to the mall, you're going to, God forbid, Walmart. I don't want to be wearing anything that is even closely related to guns at all. I mean, maybe some stuff that, you know, if you know, you know that it's gun stuff, and those people are, you're gonna be safe around, so it's fine. But if something that's outrightly screaming, you know, step on my flag and I'll step on you, I agree with that motto, right? I'm a proud American. Red, white, and blue, blooded, all day, every day. But these are things that, being part of a gray man, and wearing that kind of clothing don't mesh, they don't fold. So we want to blend in with our environment. Being the gray man, not standing out at all. Walking casually, just being a part of society. So secondly, we're going to address when we carry, when we practice being a gray man. The answer to that is always. Always, 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 always. No matter what, no matter where. If you're just, you're just gonna run down the street to the gas station, doesn't matter. Realistically, can it be always? Likely not. You know, likely there's gonna be some places that you can't go, right? Or some times where you can't carry. But we're gonna shoot for always and probably fall in most often. And that's, that's ideal, as often as possible. That's the answer to when we carry. Number three, well that's six. But number three today, is why do we carry? I refuse to be a victim. I refuse to be another statistic of why gun laws don't work and why criminals don't care about the law at all. I refuse to be a victim. Maybe a little bit of that is like out of some pride is because I don't want to be taken advantage of, but that's one reason why I'm a gray man, why I conceal carry all day, every day, honestly. Also because I have the mindset of a defender. I have the mindset of protecting not only the pillar of innocence, but also the plural of innocence. So folks that don't have this same mindset and they're maybe willfully ignorant or just oblivious to the dangers that may exist in our society, I wouldn't say that I take this upon as a responsibility to to care for people that don't want to or can't defend themselves, but at the end of the day, that's, that's a mindset that I've accepted and that I'm willing to follow through day in, day out. I mean, I don't put a gun on in the morning so that, you know, Janie and her son are gonna be safe if I meet them at the mall. That's not why I carry. But if that happens, then so be it. I'll be the man to step up to the occasion. And I'm not out looking for anything. This is a passive, this is passive defense. That's one thing to keep in mind is this is passive defense. It truly is. I'm not going out looking for these instances. In most cases, I'll refrain from even engaging if possible. Turn the cheek. Any fight that you can stay away from is a fight won as far as I'm concerned. But if that event comes to you, we've got what it takes to handle the situation. In addition to why we carry a gun is the same reason that you put on a seat belt, okay, when you're driving in your vehicle. Now, when you jump in your car, you're not expecting to get into a car accident. You're not looking for a car accident, but if that car accident's about to happen, you're sitting at this intersection, you look at this guy, he's about to T-bone you. He totally blew that stop sign. You don't have the time to be like, oh, dang, that guy's going to run into me. Let me put this seatbelt on 
and then we're good to go. You're not going to have the time for that. And that's what it is about concealed carry as well, is it's, it's a passive de defense and a security in the meantime. Because that situation is just going to show itself. When you get there, you're hanging out, you're just walking in public, maybe you're hanging out at a restaurant and some bozo decides he wants cash out the drawer or he ain't going to pay and he starts getting handsy with the managers and stuff like that and then god forbid it's a situation where the need arises you don't have time to run out to your truck and grab your gun out of your truck to come back in and then handle the situation it needs to be on you at all times because you are only going to have what you have on you Fourthly, we're gonna cover how we carry. For myself specifically, I carry in an appendix holster with a spare mag attached as well. This is carried at noon. If my waist was a clock, noon is dead center front. This is how I carry all day, every day. Concealed carry anyways. If we're doing range stuff and we're kitted up, I'll run like a mid drop holster off to the side, something like that on a battle belt. But for concealed carry, this is the only way I carry anymore. When I first started carrying, I carried in the four o'clock position, right, with a holster similar to this. Sure, it's inside the waistband at the four o'clock on my waistline, and that's covered by a shirt. That is how I started carrying when I first started concealing a firearm all day every day and about a year and a half after that is when I switched over to the appendix carry and there are a ton of different advantages we're not going to go into this right now about the advantages and disadvantages of where you're going to carry and how you're going to carry but those are things that you need to consider based on your body type based on maybe what you do for a living based on however you're going to weigh out the advantages and disadvantages that come with where you carry that gun on your person. Uh, another style of carry is going to be maybe appendix carry, but standalone without the mag caddy attached to it like so. And that would look something like this, right? So no spare mag attached with the holster the gun is in itself. And that would be the time when you carry that spare mag in a little pocket. These these pants conveniently have a little pocket set off to the side so I can access that spare mag. But that would be appendix in a standalone holster. And then you have a situation where you can carry like now outside the waistband but still concealed, right? So that you see is outside the waistband, but my shirt is still long enough to cover that gun. So that's outside the waistband at four o'clock and it can definitely still be concealed in this position. And this is, this is the typical carry for most folks that maybe have a little too much love going on in the front where they can't access that gun or it's wildly uncomfortable for them in the front. So they'll, they'll carry it off at the side. It's also a little bit more comfortable if you're going to be picking things up throughout the day like if you work in a warehouse or something and you're constantly squatting to pick up things all day long you'll notice it can get a little uncomfortable on the front and I just bear through that because the way I've justified the advantages with appendix carry I'll take whatever exchange of suffering there might be from that lastly we're going to address the where in where do we practice being a gray man where do we practice concealed carrying over here, over there. If there isn't a metal detector, I carry everywhere, okay? And I'd like to emphasize that. And this, this ties into, as well as the rest of them, the how, the where, the when, right? They all tie together, but I carry all the time everywhere I go. I really do. Truly, I, I tried to throw in a little Dr. Seuss there, but I honestly carry everywhere. If there isn't a metal detector, I've got a gun on me, okay? And, Obviously, you guys can see that we train, I'm competent with a firearm, and I have the sense of being a good guy, right? So please don't be alarmed by that. But honestly, if there's anywhere that you can go with a gun and you feel confident carrying that gun, you should have that gun with you. And, you know, that'll tie into a reference of whatever your local laws are. Obviously, don't go breaking the law for this. but. 
whatever you can get away with by abiding the law and carrying a gun on you, absolutely, absolutely carry a gun as often everywhere as you can. Maybe typically as uncomfortable as a gun might be to have on you, get used to it. Humans are fantastically good at getting used to things. We really are. Carry the largest gun you can comfortably while still concealing it because the point is to not stand out. So if you've got a huge print of a gun sticking out of your shirt or you reach up the aisle to grab something off the top shelf and bam, gun, right? You kind of defeated the purpose. You've marked yourself, unfortunately. So the largest gun that you can comfortably carry while still concealing it. I, I gotta be honest, I, I've changed the way I dress a little bit to cater towards carrying a gun. Typically I'll wear a little bit longer shirt, a little bit baggier clothes. So it gives me that freedom where I'm not absolutely advertising that I've got a gun on me all day, every day. Because that's for me to know and that's for a bad guy to find out, right? So there are the six talking points of the theory of a gray man. And I understand that this could potentially be an information overload. There's a lot of jargon going on here. There's a lot of words that maybe are particular to somebody that's a little bit more experienced in this. And obviously we're trying to cater to people who may be new to this and uninformed about this. So if you have any questions about things that we've mentioned here, a term that we've used there, please fire away with whatever curiosities you have. We'd be happy to answer those things. We've addressed a lot of information here today. Obviously you can go back, replay it, address these things again, but that is the theory of a gray man. We appreciate you guys watching, really. I mean, it's awesome. It, it's so much fun and it is so cool to really bring this all to light. It's so much fun. We, we appreciate you being here and checking this out. Please subscribe if you don't mind. If it's not too much to ask, hit that like button. And if you don't mind us bothering you every week, hit that bell notification so you can stay updated on the new information that we're trying to bring out to you. And we'll see you guys next time, all right? Thanks.